4, 3, 2, 1, top. Et décollage VS26, Galio Fort M9. Je ne pas mettre à bord son normaux. Raphael, that was very impressive. That a ball of fire uh, rolling uh, into the sky. Bonne stabilisation du lanceur. I cannot get tired of it. I bet. Like really, it's very, always very impressive. Uh, and this is like, you know, passing through the, the clouds. What sort of speed is it going it, it at now? It is night. You cannot, uh, like, you can hardly imagine that it's night right now because it's so bright. It's so bright. The light. So right now, Soyuz is providing the main thrust for the mission to escape really the gravitational uh, pull of uh, of the Earth, and in, in a few seconds uh, we should see the separation of the four lateral boosters that are surrounding the main core. I mean, you can imagine that in two minutes, the Soyuz will have gone from zero to, to about 50 kilometers of altitude. That's quite incredible. From zero to two kilometers per second. Bonne stabilisation du lanceur. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Like what would this is probably now say? faster than like, like a bullet. Faster than a faster bullet than right a now. Bullet. Yeah. You've got the, um, the earpiece. What is the DDO? What did he just say then? It, it said that everything is, is nominal, the trajectory is nominal, so uh, everything's looking good for Soyuz right now. So you can see the light coming from the four boosters. So in 10 seconds, we will have the confirmation, won't we, of the separation of the boosters? And during this... Yeah, oh wow, oh you well, can see it. We can see it, it's wow, incredible. That's really incredible. What a sight, Raphael. Because uh, usually you can see it in daylight, but yeah. At night, it's At night, very it's rare. It's quite yeah. incredible. Yeah. Must be Separation des blocs BVGD. So we should be in the some seconds as well. No, so, so it's confirmed. It, it's separated. You, you saw it. And uh, you can tell that uh, Soyuz is now waiting only, <laughs> I'm saying only, 100 tons. It was 310 tons before. So it lost 70% of its weight. Wow, that's quite incredible. But um, so it's got four boosters. Is this specific to Soyuz? Yeah, we can see now on the uh, the 3D images. It has four boosters. Can you talk to us about that? Well, I mean, the size and the number of the boosters um, that you need for a flight really depends on how much power you want to give to your rocket to uh, place the satellites into space. On Soyuz, you have four boosters. On Ion 5, we have two, but they are bigger. On Vega, we have one booster. So it really depends on... Uh, on uh, the, the performance that uh, is required for, for the mission. With Ariane 6, we will have two versions, one with two boosters and one with four boosters, okay. depending also on the performance of the launch uh, vehicle. To give you an idea, with Ariane 62, um, you can, uh, with Ariane 64, you can double the mass of the satellite to be put into, for example, geostationary transfer orbit. So if we look up the... Um the images which are coming up now, the 3D images, the wonderful image of the uh, the launch vehicle. What can we see? You can see the altitude, distance, speed. So right now it's 117 and kilometers of altitude. And sorry to interrupt, and in three seconds we will just, sorry, we will also be having the separation of the fairing. There we go. Altitude du lanceur, conforme à l'attendu. That's just been confirmed, has it not? It is confirmed. So now it's confirmed and it's a very Brilliant. good news because the, the, the mission can continue. You can imagine that it's an important step. Otherwise, we could not release the satellites into space. So it means that we are above the atmosphere um, and that the satellites don't need the protection of the fairing anymore. Uh, it was protecting them from the friction of the air. So if I've understood rightly, we are now waiting for the separation of the second stage. Is that right? Yes. Uh, it's right, and this is a, a peculiar um, separation because the third stage is going to ignite two seconds before, and this is actually the ignition of the third stage that will push the second stage and separate it from the rest of the launch vehicle. And it should come 
any, any second seconds now. now. There we go. So waiting for the confirmation of the video. Because I remind that this is a 3D simulations here. Allumage blocky, extinction blocka et séparation. So it's confirmed. That's so brilliant. The That's really can brilliant continue. news. Another important step. So the achieved. second stage, or the main core, has now been separated. The arrière. third stage remains the one that powers the launch. What is the role of each of these stages for the launcher? Well, ha having several stages increases the mass uh, of the satellites to be put into orbit. Stabilisation suite à séparation. So the principle is rather simple, and we progressively, progressively, sorry, get rid of any mass on the launcher that is useless. It's like uh, if you want an image, you can consider a fuel truck. Let's consider that the truck is driving using the gas contained in its tanks. When the first tank in, uh, is empty, it becomes completely useless, uh, so it becomes uh, dead weight, if you will, and we just remove uh, this dead weight to make the rest of the rocket lighter and to gain power to continue the mission. So at this stage of the mission, Raphael, how far along is our launcher? So you can see that it has traveled 780 Fonctionnement normal du lanceur suivant les trois axes. Kilometers in only six minutes. That's incredible. So it's now at the speed of 4.5 kilometers per second. I remind that all the parameters are on the screen, so everybody can read it. So it's three or four times the speed of a bullet right now. So we're getting closer to the naval station. What are the specificities? I can't say that word. The specifics of this station. The well, uh, unlike ground telemetry stations, the naval station is located uh, right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, in this case, this is a ship that is equipped with an antenna that we position on the ocean a couple days before the launch. So this is a mobile station on water, literally. Yeah, and uh, it raises some log logistic uh, issues because we need to position the ship, the ship in advance. The ship really Acquisition needs... Acquisition of the la station naval. Okay, very good news. So the ship needs, I, yeah, I, I said that uh, it's uh, We've just a, a technological the issue because the ship needs to be stable and well-oriented in order to receive the signal from the launcher with sufficient accuracy. Propulsif du bloc I. Can Correct. you confirm, Raphael? He has confirmed the acquisition yeah. of the naval station. That's brilliant the news. The acquisition is confirmed. So we've already talked about this station for the previous Vega flight, VB20. That flight also had a rather unusual trajectory. Can you perhaps also tell us what direction uh, the launch is going and our launch is going in tonight? Well, I mean, this is the targeted orbit that really drives the trajectory of the launcher. And it drives what we call the ground track. It is, in a way, the shadow of the launcher on the Earth's uh, surface. And uh, right now, the inclination of the targeted orbit uh, for Galileo is 57 um, degrees with respect to the equator. And we have the obligations to continuously monitor the position of the launcher up to a certain uh, altitude. And sometimes, like today, it happened that we cannot follow the launcher from a fixed ground station because the launcher passes over the Atlantic Ocean and it will continue over Normandy and England. This is why we need such a naval station. It's going over my home country. That's brilliant. You're English, right? So yeah. <laughs> If you hadn't guessed already. So anyway, so we're going in a northeasterly, eastern direction. Is that right then? Yeah, exactly. But you know, you, we use a different uh, network of uh, telemetry stations depending on the trajectory. For example, for um, a mission going towards the east, that's the case for geostationary transfer orbit missions, we use a different network of uh, telemetry stations. Parameter propulsive du bloc conforme à l'attendu. And when we uh, target the uh, sun synchronous orbit, we are launching towards the north and we are using another set of telemetry stations. And the DDO just said that everything is nominal right now. So can you just tell us at 9.23, 9 minutes 23 seconds, here we will be announcing what? Well, the separation. the separation of the third stage, which is another very important step here. It's, it's now, that's right. We can see it on the 3D image. Yes, it's and quite we are incredible. waiting, yes. We are waiting for the confirmation, of course, uh, from the video. there we have it. I think my f the, f the most wonderful image I've ever seen of this uh, type of golden mushroom. Yeah, what this is, is that? This is the Fregat upper Extinction stage. Du et séparation. So it's confirmed. The third stage has Brilliant. been separated. And right now, 
it is the fregat upper stage that is going to continue the mission. It is that upper stage that is going to place uh, the Galileo satellites into their uh, orbit, separated orbit. And from there, the Galileo satellites will place themselves on their operational orbit. So can you just tell what is it exactly in a couple of words before we get the announcement from the DDO about the ignition of the first frigate? Yeah, so um, the ignition of the first frigate is really to place this upper stage, so it's happening right now, we will need the confirmation from the DDO, to place this upper stage on an elliptical uh, trend, uh, intermediate orbit, and it's going to ignite for 12 or 13 minutes, which is quite long because you it requires some energy incredible. to place um, the upper stage on this orbit. So we're still waiting for confirmation. Exactly, and then we will have a long ballistic phase of about three hours and 20 minutes. Confirmation du premier allumage de l'étage frégate. That's confirmed. Brilliant. So another Everything probably is going to plan. one of the most important sets sequence. for the missions. Yes. So I was saying that we will have a 13 minutes of ignition of this upper stage. Then we will turn the engines off. And the Soyuz, we, uh, the, um, the Fregat, uh, will follow the path, engines off, for a long ballistic phase. It, it's it will be like coasting in space uh, for three hours and 20 minutes before it reignites. And this time, it will change also the trajectory from an elliptic one to a circular one. A circular, okay. Yes, That's which is going to be the final orbit where the satellites are going to be separated into space. It's moving at an incredible speed. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, so right now it's... Uh, uh, it's uh, you yeah, can see yeah, the <laughs> naval <laughs> station yeah, coming exactly. into view on our... Yeah, exactly. And I think that uh, so we, are, so we, we, we will go from... Uh, so that's uh, what so I was what about to say. Tell it's us, Raphael. Yeah, it means that the next uh, telemetry stations just took over the signal. And Santa Maria is... Uh, Where is you know, Santa Maria? You, you see that it, this is an island, part of the uh, Azores Archipelago. It is located west uh, of the Portugal. It's uh, in uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and like I said, it is now taking back the signal from the launcher. So can you remind us again how it's a rather long mission and how long it will last? It will last uh, three hours and 50 minutes in total. So yes, this is an unusual, particularly long mission here. So... Um, uh, can you imagine <laughs> that Sorry. in 12 minutes we have traveled 3,004 Hundred kilometers. It is quite we incredible. We have crossed the Atlantic Ocean wow. in 12 minutes, and right now it's approaching. It's approaching Europe actually, and it will uh, pass above. The parameters propulsive of the stage frigate are nominal. So, so everything in nominal. So we've uh, we're about to lose, or we've lost the naval station. The expert has, Raphael has um, confirmed the loss of the naval station. Yeah. So why are we losing the signal for how long and so when? Is this is completely normal. We lose the signal when, from the telemetry station point of view, the launcher disappears behind the horizon. So to answer your questions, we sort of don't need the naval station anymore because uh, it has been recovered by the Santa Maria station. The it has taken over the job to follow the launcher. This is why we use actually several successive stations to follow the trajectory of the launch vehicle in real time. And you know, this is like a chain of acquisition and losses along the course with sometimes short, short visibility holes when a station loses the signal before the next one recovers it. Well, thank you, Raphael. In a couple of minutes, the two satellites will be orbited into space to join the Galileo constellation 23,000 kilometers above our heads, which is quite incredible to think of that. Um, look, coming up on our screens. So the two satellites on board the Suez launcher tonight are Galileo Foch M9, Sat-2728, we call them, and they're the 27th and 28th in the constellation. So, Raphael, where are they now? So we are waiting for the confirmation of the cutoff of but the where fregat are they engines. Now? If you look at the map up on the screen, they're can floating, can you coasting. See? 
Can you recognize? Can I recognize? Is it England? So right now, just to tell you that right now, it's 600 kilometers of altitude, which is quite high. Quite high. I don't so know where it is, but you're going to tell me. So we're still, as I say, waiting again for the announcement of the DDO, the confirmation from the DDO of the frigate extinction. Yes, exactly. Ah. Confirmation de l'extinction du frigate. L'orientation de la centrale inertielle et du frégate avant le deuxième boost est nominale. Le moteur principal du frégate fonctionne nominalement.